joining us in the studio still is The Sun's chief political correspondent, Jack Elsom, who's here for a roundup of all the top stories of the day. Jack, what are we going to talk about now? Well, I haven't got my run order with me, well, so I'm sort uh, of like, like, well, I'm, I'm I think, lost. Uh, I mean, in a, in a little while, we're going to talk about uh, John Venables. Uh, he's the killer of uh, Jamie Bulger. And uh, we need to revisit the COVID inquiry uh, where Matt Hancock is delivering an hilarious mm -hmm. performance. But uh, first off, Jack, uh, very sad news. Uh, first thing this morning, I woke up to hear the uh, radio announcing that the ceasefire was over mm. and the war was very much back on. And we're looking now, it's a kind of an eerie image. This was the rocket. It's actually coming towards you. It doesn't look as if it's moving. But this was the rocket that ended the ceasefire, fired by Hamas. And you'll see it sort of fizzle out in a little while. But uh, this ended the truce. Uh, and we're hearing that uh, Israel is raining bombs down on Gaza again. Uh, where's it all heading now, then? People are saying it's going to get worse now. Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And obviously we've had this ceasefire for a few days and that's allowed the hostages to get out. And I think that has loaded pressure onto both Hamas and Israel to try and keep this ceasefire going because people want, you know, all those videos of kids and hostages running back into their parents' arms has really sort of piled pressure on both sides to keep this uh, ceasefire extended. However, Israel has said for the entire time that, make no mistake, we are going to be crushing Hamas. This, this war will end with the end of Hamas. And they haven't disguised their intentions throughout this ceasefire period. They have said that we are going to go back after them when the ceasefire ends. And to be, fa and to be fair, it seems that this ceasefire was not ended by them, but with a Hamas rocket, yeah, as, we, exactly. as we discussed. Here's what, here's what worries me. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt that, Alex. It is is, you know, the fear was that this truce, which has been going on since last Friday, mm. for a week now, do you remember last Friday, a very mm. dramatic mm. show, we were actually on air yeah, as right. the first hostages were released. So it's been going on for a, a, a week, and the fear was that uh, uh, Hamas would use this cessation uh, to regroup, mm. to refresh its armaments, uh, get more fuel and be ready for the fight again. And yesterday, apart from firing that rocket several hours earlier, they walked into uh, Jerusalem and killed three people stand, standing at a bus stop. So yeah. it seems to me that Hamas absolutely, definitely wanted this war to restart. Yeah. What's that all about? And completely. And, you know, we saw Hamas leaders on the television yesterday saying that October 7th was a dress rehearsal. Now, if you're sitting in Tel Aviv and you're, and you're the Israeli prime minister, you think, hang on a minute, we can't allow this to continue. Now, it is obviously very sad that no more hostages for the time being appear to be being released, because obviously this, that was the condition of the ceasefire. Mm -hmm. And now that hostilities have resumed, you would assume that that's not going to happen anymore, mm -hmm. which is obviously incredibly sad you know, for, the, for the Israelis still in Gaza. However, I think that people now seeking to apportion blame onto Israel for restarting this, uh, this bombing campaign need to think very carefully because they, because they also need to be focusing on Hamas. And it seems in this war, a lot of that, from a lot of the portion of the commentariat, is being lost. Yeah, I think what's interesting here, and picking up on what you were saying, Kev, you know, the terrorist attack that happened in Israel during this truce, the fact that it was broken with uh, Hamas lobbing a missile over the border, when they frankly know the Iron Dome is going to wipe it out. Mm. Um, and I assume that what they're trying to do is provoke Israel into continuing a bombardment to try and draw countries like Iran in. But I think that, you know, America's got two mighty great warships just off the coast. We've sent one across. I think what Hamas want is the conflagration to extend regionally, but we've almost reached a three-dimensional stalemate. I mean, geopolitically, how do we navigate our way out of this? So, such an interesting question. And at the start of this war, there was massive fears that this would spread to a wider conflict, dragging in Hezbollah in Lebanon, dragging in Iran, which backs both Hamas and Hezbollah itself, potentially even escalating, you know, towards Jordan and, and, and Iraq and Egypt. That hasn't happened so far. And as this war deteriorates, you would fear that potentially that could stoke a wider escalation of this war. Now, many people in the West, you know, the US, United Nations, even Britain, want this humanitarian pause to extend. The last thing they really want is fighting. And for a lot of world leaders now, especially someone like Joe Biden, the tightrope they are walking is rigidly defending Israel's right to defend itself, which I think is paramount, but also wanting lives to be saved 
in Gaza, lots of innocent people over there who are dying, you know, which mm -hmm. is a complete ca uh, catastrophe as well. And they're, what they're trying to do is really straddle that divide. And it's incredibly difficult, mm -hmm. yeah. isn't it? And it's even going to get more difficult, as we're seeing today, Israel is extending that bombing campaign into the south of Gaza. Mm -hmm. Remember, at the start of this war, they said, flee to the south, because we are going to be going for the north and the center. Now that they have started in the south, mm -hmm. and the sort of areas of the map which are safe get smaller, there's going to be more calls to open up the Rafa crossing, more people out, more calls maybe to get, you know, to, to get, get people into safety, mm. it's incredibly difficult and it's a heartbreaking situation. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. And Joe Biden's not got, getting mm. what he wanted because he made a speech, was it yesterday, the day before, saying, uh, you know, what Hamas wants is for this war to continue. We must not give them that. He made it very clear that he wanted this truce to continue. Yeah. So America has not got its mm. own way here. Uh, and uh, the conflict continues apace and the tragedy continues. Uh,